first you have the patient come in and you have them have a seat. You want to explain to them about the stress test, ask them if they've ever had one before to see if they're familiar. Then even if they're familiar, you want to just reiterate what's going to take place as far as um, prepping and how long it takes and um, also let them know, you know you're going to have to change into a gown in some cases. Um, if they're wearing a t-shirt then they can just pull their shirt up and you can prep that way. But if they are wearing like a work shirt then you're going to tell them to take the gown and um, they can go in the bathroom and change and let them know that they need to have the opening in the front. And if they need to use the bathroom at that time they can also do that. So then they're going to have to read and sign a consent form. Um, it's important to let them know that uh, they must read it and then sign and then have them fill out this information on the second page about themselves. Now next to our stress machine is this little uh, cabinet where we keep our stress supplies. And what you're going to need is a scrubby pad and two alcohol pads and ten electrodes. So then right before you start working on a patient, you want to clean your hands and uh, put on some gloves. So you're going to count down to the fourth intercostal space. That's where V1 is going to go. You're going to shave the patient. It can be kind of bad for in the summertime for the guys, but you have to shave them so they'll stick on good. And then you want to come up to their collarbone and for the left and right arm you want to shave under there right in the middle and you know, try to keep it clean then you're going to take the scrubby pad and you're going to try to um, remove any dead skin so you let them know that you have to um, sand them so we can remove any dead skin now when we're doing uh, the precordial leads you want to make sure that you get V6 all the way under the um, underarm and then you um, want to take alcohol and you're going to clean off the dead skin. So you take the um, electrode and there's like a little black dot that you want to get right in the center of where you cleaned off push in from the, on that little uh, silver button there to make sure you get it right on that red area. And also next to V6 on the side there you can go back just um, one more step, I mean one more spot to put your left leg because sometimes you're going to run into like a really meaty area on the abdomen and when they're walking this will cause artifacts so you want to keep it on a more lean area. Then you're going to take the belt and you want to wrap it around the patient's uh, waist. You want to put it up high enough where it's not going to fall down, you know, around their legs. And also, you want to put it snug, but not too snug, so they can um, have enough room to breathe when they get into the higher levels. Now, all the leads are labeled, so um, you know, you know precisely where to put them. It's a good thing to check after the stress test that um, the leads are clean so that for your next patient, you know, it's not going to be junked up in any way, like with sweat or anything, because that can cause a problem with the reading. So you always want to make sure that your leads are clean. Then you have the patient have a seat. Push the button on the monitor and this screen comes up then you want to click on new test 
and this box shows and then you're going to want to fill in or you click on new patient and then you're going to fill in the information down the bottom based on what the patient wrote on the information sheet so first thing you're going to enter is their last name and what if it's a guy and it's a junior or senior you want to make sure you put that in there and then their first name Then the patient's ID is usually the six digit medical records number, followed by whether the patient was an outpatient or if it's an inpatient, you will put the patient's room number in this box. Next, you wanna enter the patient's date of birth and it's a two digit month and a two digit uh, day and four digit year and it's so important to make sure you have the year because that's how we are able to get their uh, predicted maximum next you uh, click on the drop down put whether male or female height is entered in inches so someone who is six feet is going to be 72 inches someone six four 76 inches and you enter the weight in pounds then you're going to click select. Once you do that little green box comes up and then we're going to see the patient's EKG. And here in this box we're going to it defaults to a Bruce protocol, but there are other um, protocols that can be used. In our case, we would, in this room, either use um, Bruce or the Butamine. Over here is a very important step um, for the predicted maximum. It comes up with um, 184, which is 100%, but we use 85%, so we need to write down that 156 um, for their predicted maximum of at 85%. So we do write that down on our paper. And then another very important step is you have to go back and change the 85% to 100. Because that's just the way the machine is designed. Then you go to test personnel and you can type in any medical history that is pertinent. Next, you'll click on drop down to uh, for the reason for the test, and then we click on what type of test. And there's again the different type of stress test that we do. Next, you're going to want to put in the ordering doctor. and also the attending doctor and the referring. If it's somebody other than a cardiologist, we wanna make sure that report gets to their primary doctor. Then we put in the technician or nurse who's doing the procedure or the doing the test. Also, we enter the patient's medication along with the dose. Patients that are on beta blockers will have a difficult time getting their heart rate up to um, 85%. So it was important to ask if the patient took their beta blocker in the morning. And then we hit OK. So we go to pretest, and when you hit it once, it's going to read. Um, well, you need to hit it four times till it says hyper, till it says warm up. And then um, you have the option of checking the leads 
and you want to keep the numbers below 20. If you find that one of the numbers is above 20, you may want to remove that electro and resand them or put it in a different position. But the goal is always to get that number below 20. You can check the leads also by doing a tap test and look at the monitor as you're tapping or you can have the patient walk in place to see how the leads react when they walk in place. Next you're going to have the patient have a seat on the stretcher and you want to take their blood pressure turn the power on and it boots up you want to have the patient just rest his arm down and take their blood pressure to get the baseline blood pressure once you get that blood pressure then you want to plug it in and if the patient's never walked on a treadmill before you want to demonstrate uh, they want to walk on the treadmill keeping their feet close to the front. They almost want to kick the front of the machine as they're walking. They don't want to walk where their feet are way back towards the end of the treadmill. They want to walk up straight keeping their feet close to the front and just resting their hands on the bar. They want to, don't want to grip it too tight or they don't want to lean on it because that would give us a bad reading. Also remind the patient to always look straight ahead they don't want to look down at their feet or side to side because they may get dizzy that way so remind them to always look straight ahead at the picture also let them know that we will be taking their blood pressure every few minutes just to make sure their blood pressure doesn't go too high as they're exercising let them know that the treadmill will increase um, every three minutes and go on an incline if they feel any chest pain or really short of breath let us know and um, we'll slow the machine down and have to wait till it stops completely so take that cord and you want to make sure it's in front of the machine have the patient rest their arms on the bar the emergency stop button is if you know you have to use it it's there you just push it down and the treadmill will stop right the patient right in their tracks so before you start you want to start treadmill and then you push the exercise button and it goes on an incline starts out 1.7 miles per hour at 10 percent grade When it's time to enter the blood pressure, you have them drop their arm down by the side, take their blood pressure, and then you enter and tab over and enter. Oh, hit OK. We're going to the second stage is two and a half miles an hour at a 12% grade. When you're ready to bring the patient down, you hit the recovery button, slows down. You let them know to keep walking until it stops completely. And then have the patient have a seat on the stretcher. can hook unhook the patient from the manual blood pressure and hook them back to the automatic blood pressure once the patient's finished recovery we hit test in it's going to say test in you're going to hit yes or enter and it will bring you to the interpretation box here you can enter the reason for termination resting EKG your 
functional capacity and their heart rate response to exercise drop down for their blood pressure response to exercise and this will all be given by the cardiologist or the nurse practitioner or uh, nurse will enter this information whether or not they had chest pain if there were any arrhythmias tell what type of arrhythmia if they had any ST changes and an overall impression of the stress test now if any time like a arrhythmia comes up you can hit the um, recall button and it will record I'm not sure how many seconds back maybe eight I'm not sure but I know that it will uh, record that for you so you have to hit uh, recall and then stop writer in order for it to stop printing If you need to put a comment in, that gives you drop down options. If there's anything you need to modify, it's going to give you like a uh, caution sign, but you can modify. And if the patient has a pacemaker, you can go in and click that. Uh, hit post test review is going to say okay and here it gives you uh, more options of things that you can look at post test that gives you a tabular summary of each stage graphic trends is exactly that graphics of each stage And then EKG strips you can print if you need to print something extra out you can do it that way also you can go through a arrhythmia review now before you hit the um, final report you want to make sure it's on plain stress test or if it was a different type that was entered in the beginning it should say that same thing at the end and then you hit print final report for a plain stress test is usually two pages And then you hit initial screen, it goes back to initial screen. This is the modified version for a stress echo. You need to leave V2 open so that the echo tech can take pictures in that area. And you also want to come down lower for your precordial leads. And that's it.